All over the world, substance abuse has been on the increase and has cut across every sector of society, regardless of gender, age, race or class. The drug trade is estimated to be worth $500 billion worldwide and has now made its way to Nigeria, destroying lives and becoming a huge challenge for the government to combat. The first drug introduced to Nigeria was cannabis after the Second World War in 1945. The Nigerian soldiers returned from India with cannabis seeds, which they began to grow for recreational use. Since then, the race and diversity of drug use has exploded. Nigeria is a very religious country, and so the majority of NGOs working to ease the drug abuse problem are faith-driven. Pastor Happy is the founder of the New Life Center, which has rehabilitated addicts for 25 years. Uh, I am a Pastor Happy. E.J. Happy, you call it. Ekwe Josiah Happy of the New Life Drug and Rehabilitation Center in uh, Lagos State, Nigeria. This job it's about 23 years now to establish in 1993. By the special grace of God, we also have recorded a lot of success too. So far, we have rehabilitated more than 700. And over 40 are preaching the gospel. Yeah, to get these boys, we have to go to the joints, you know, where they sell the cocaine all over Lagos Island, in fact, all over Nigeria. <laughs> Bro, there are more than 10,000 joints. Okay. Because they are coming up every day. In the joint, there are army people, police, officers. Everybody is there, you know. They are, they are doing the same thing. Some traffic water, finish and go back to, to control the, uh, the traffic. First of all, arrange food vendor who come and supply food first. Tell them they should eat. So the moment the food vendor comes, they'll be very hungry. They don't have time to eat. Every money they make, they go on cocaine. So if you bring free food, they are very happy about it. As they'll be eating, we'll be preaching to them and pray for them. So we have to bring them down to the camp, place to lie, lie down, lay their heads, change their clothes. Most of them, have, they have no property in life. Only that rag they wear in their body. They look nice, buy soap, bath three times a day so that they can recover back to their normal life. Success rate has been high because it was purely God who introduced to them and that God yeah, their prayer and ours and they delivered them. <laughs> so this is the first time you've mentioned his name since for the past six years. Or seven years. I'm 60 years old. Okay, I'm 800 years old. Okay, okay. How do you get to He's 34 years old, precisely. I've been here for six months. Yeah, I've been here for seven years. He has been here for seven and years. He has recollected for six months. Now. He has recollected for six he's years. Collecting is mine. Okay. First of all, he came in contact with marijuana Marijuana. when he was in school. When he came here, he was in a very bad shape of life. Very bad shape. Those nations hearing of voices, okay. the demonic world talking to himself. He could not be able to bath. My wife have to bath him. You know, he doesn't know anything about taking bath. He would just sit down there and start easing himself there. He would remove the cloth. My wife would wash it. He would just stay like this. He would never blink. He would just stay like monument. He can stay like that for the next three days. If he stayed there, whether sun or rain, he would stay there till somebody would go and carry him out of the place. But today, if rain is falling, he will just run from wherever he's come to the house. And he washes his plate, he fetches water, he washes his clothes now. You know, he greets us now. Now he told you his name. Before, he would never tell you his name. My name is How long have you been here? Just a month. Why did you come here? For drug use, marijuana. Every day, it's like. Since 2005, 
five. You can get drugs everywhere. It is hundred naira. Four hours. I'm going to a joint, a bunk. Just like an open place like this. You might go to some places, the, oh, the landlord is the one selling it. You might go to some places, the tenant is the one selling it. I said, okay. Mm -hmm. I said, uh, Raf Raf no. All those drugs, all those tablets, so they sell all those. How did you get into drugs? Friends, street friends. Do they also have drug problem like you now have? Some of them have. Why some of them have? He's going to be here maximum of six months. He has already picked up very well. There's a lot of change in him since he came for one month now, spiritually and also mentally. It's fine now. Washes his clothes, does everything for us and the family members. So when they saw, they were so happy that so new life can do this within a short time. After visiting the New Life Center and speaking with some of the recovering addicts, Pastor Happy told us about Kabiru, a former patient at the New Life Center who turned his life around and now has devoted his life to campaigning for drug abuse awareness and prevention. I'm Mohammed Kabiru, Mama. I'm from a do state Aruchi. You went to CMS Grammar School, which was uh, one of the best schools at that time in your time. Very true, sir. They were very great guys, guys you know. Uh, one was a footballer and was named Chief Justice. You understand me? Many guys. Uh, there is a senator in Abuja there who was who is from Lagos State. Entanglement with substances, substances started when I was in a. Uh, CMS in my school, 1972, at the age of 12, I experimented with cigarettes, moved, uh, tried marijuana. In spite of the fact that then, in the early 70s, the penalty for uh, smoking and possession of marijuana was so stiff, but we still did it, we didn't care about some things. I went to boarding house. I got in touch with a lot of friends, and uh, from, those, from some of those friends, uh, I got into a lot of bad stuff. And I kept those kind of friends that we always talked what was normal, what was right was wrong, and what was wrong was right. We love to go to shrine, we love Fela's politics and everything about Fela, like he was somebody we really adored. And eventually those experiments led me to other experiments, because at about 1981 years, when I was 21, I experimented with cocaine, heroin, and I loved it. I thought this was the ultimate high, and I kept doing it for a very, very long time. I got into the trade. I got involved in all its facets. I was going to Asia, I would get it from Asia, do some runs, drop it somewhere, like a relay team, and some other folks from the same crew would pick it up and take it to the ultimate destination. And the money was good? Very lucrative. If the money's not good, nobody does it. <laughs> About 40 years, close to 40 years, I've been messed up in substances. And wow. everything. Because at the point in time it was fun. Later it wasn't fun. I, I sought help. But then my best was not good enough to ensure its severance with substances. So I just kept on it. Because at the point in time I, I, I found myself in a pit, so to speak where all that was visible was darkness, where thoughts were dark, inclination dark, people's uh, vibrations and radiations, they were dark, all their thoughts dark, all their calculations dark. Where all that was visible was only darkness. You can't imagine it. You, I'm just telling you, but you can't really get a, a good picture of what I'm telling you. I know what I went through. So when I got into that pit, I tried everything to get myself out of that pit. But today, here I am. I'm out of the pit. I, I, I've been to, I went to a psychiatric hospital. Uh, I've been to several rehabs, private hospitals, you know. For the psychiatric hospital at uh, Abekuta, it was a two month program. For psychiatric hospital at uh, Lagos, here, yeah, yeah, the first phase also. The first time I went there, I think I spent about three months. And the second time, two months, I was discharged. To New Life, but um, what happened was that I didn't really have that understanding. New Life was supposed to be a faith-based institution, but I didn't get into that aspect of God and Christ. 
So I lost the essence. I lost what would have given me the enablement you know, to overcome. Around 1981-82, there were only two joints on the whole of Lagos. But now, you have drug joints everywhere. Everywhere. I mean everywhere. They use rented apartments in such places. Uh, some of these uh, guys, they now do what? Make their joints more, a little bit more comfortable. Toilets, have a sleeping room. So those who work all night can sleep during the day. So people live there. So many joints, so many shops. People operating freely with impunity. Why? What has gotten them to that level? Because the relevant and necessary security agencies have been compromised. They come in there to come and tax them. And there is an understanding. So they operate freely. Then, you need petrol, that is my day. My office was in St. Nicholas Hospital, the floor. So, because of this drug issue, that I lost the job anyway. So, since then, uh, I couldn't got any permanent job anymore. How did you get involved? In drug? Yeah. Yeah, it's through friends. I got involved. Bad boys, it's not bad. But I was enjoying them. So now that I know that this is how drug is. Then I know that it's too much for them. Anyway. Hello, Hello. 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 This is Charlie. This is worth 500 naira. And this is how we take it. You put in the stem. Here we lights. The, the advantage of taking this thing. One. You can drop. You can maneuver any situation. Disadvantage. There are some things that you deprive you of getting it. If you go to the hospital and you call a drug addict, they will not like to treat you. That's why we have non-government organizations. They deal with human rights. My name is... They call me Hollywood. I deal with firewood. That's, my, that's how I get my own money. I go to all sides. The many developers in this Lagos Island knows me. After they finish their building, they just say, clear this place for us and carry all the firewood. That's what I work for. <laughs> That's what I work for. This one, I don't... Are you married? Yes. Where's your family? They are in this Lagos. But I don't have father, I don't have mother. Yeah, but you have wife and children? I have wife and children. How many children? Three children. But they, they, do, they, and they know you? They know me, but my first phone doesn't like. You have been in this for 30 years. Yeah. Well, you want to get out? I want to get out. You need help? I need help. Anybody that can help you? I will follow you. <laughs> I've used heroin, I've used cocaine, I've used marijuana. <laughs> the most brutal of those three is marijuana. Because the way it hits you, bam, 
the first time you are walking and the ground seems elevated, the way you are taking your step, the very first time, most first timers is the same experience we had. You know, the way you'll be walking, at times it gets to you, you are feeling so dizzy, you are sweating. You can be in an air conditioned room, you're sweating and you're dizzy, you can't keep your head up like this. Very brutal. And that is what people are legislating. Governments are legislating now. You understand me? And legalizing right now. Recreation and use. What are we talking about? And we all know that it's a highway, not just a gateway to other drugs. What would be your advice to youth who are into drugs or who are contemplating getting into drugs? Ah. I will tell them, run for your dear life. It's very, very dangerous. No child, no youth, no teenager should ever try to hear the story of drugs, no experiment. The best thing you should do is to quit. You shouldn't try it because there's no gain in it. It just makes you, it just makes you high. If you do too well and it stops, you'll see where you are. Drugs will lead you to the wrong place, will lead you to wrong, wrong friends, push you to wrong people. But who just want to get involved? Never try, you get burnt. I'm looking for the appropriate words to describe what it is, but it is evil. Mm. It is evil. It is evil. It is evil. It turns a man upside down. It makes him less than a human being. It doesn't give you anything. It doesn't add anything to you. Even my enemy, I don't pray for my enemy to take it anymore. So it all begins with an experiment. This search for the ultimate high. You never get the ultimate high. It's just like a mirage. When you think you have got into it, you still see for The major drug institutions in Nigeria have failed to implement structures to support the rehabilitation of previous drug users into society. As a result, this has led to a revolving door of addicts in and out of treatment and a never-ending cycle of drug abuse. Far from a brother from the Enzo. London born and a born again home, but I drew my lane with a pencil. I made it here with no mentors. I'm I still standing on the tenth floor? And I meant for more. I pour every ounce of my soul on a song for the pain in my tempo. Yeah, and my tempo's never gonna stop. That's why I'm still here on my ten toes. From the school of gold as benzos. I know just why I'm on this earth for. I was sent for, sent by God, sent forth every blessing, my voice and extension. Therefore, my words are extend those shoot for the stars like a killer from the ends of. And you don't even know where this life unfolds. That's how the story goes for real. And when I'm on my own, I feel it in my soul. That's how the story goes. Higher, 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 higher.